Hello, welcome back. Uh, today is lecture uh, 32. So, we have 3 lectures remaining in the discussion for gallium nitride wide band gap RF devices. So, in the last 3 lectures this week, we had introduced uh, in you know in great details about Elgan Gan Hemp and various issues pertaining to Elgan Gan Hemp, especially for power amplifier application. So, how to increase the breakdown voltage with field plate, for instance, we discussed about virtual gate and gate lag, drain lag, uh, RF DC to RF dispersion that is. Okay. We have discussed uh, also about compensation doping in terms of iron doping the buffer for reduced uh, leakage uh, and various you know aspects that are pertaining to real world application of GANHEMT have been discussed. But going ahead we will talk today in more details about how you know about this large area gallium nitride devices for high power in RF uh, you know how people make them what are the different issues and aspects that are pertaining to large multi finger GAN RF hemp. Okay. And then subsequently we will talk about what is the next frontier, what are the next uh, hot things or bigger things for gallium nitride RF electronics in the next few years. And finally, we will talk about a little bit about linearity in GAN RF hemp from the device point of view. So, that will conclude our this week's discussion on uh, gallium nitride RF hemp. Okay. So, over coming here to uh, coming over to the whiteboard here. So, we will continue with GAN hemp uh, and just to summarize what we have discussed in a way, gallium nitride hemp offer significant advantages over contemporary gallium arsenide pseudomorphic or metamorphic hemp or silicon devices. We have not yet discussed silicon devices, but we will soon discuss after this week. We will talk about silicon RF devices also. So, especially for power amplifier application, okay, especially for power amplifier application, gallium nitride offers tremendous benefits. I am just summarizing. On the material front, there are some advantages which translate to advantages on the device front and advantages on the device front translate to advantages on the system front. This that is what it says in this image is taken from Yule development. So, you can say because of a higher band gap of gallium nitride you have a higher breakdown field of around 3 mega volt per centimeter theoretically speaking. Because of polarization which is a material property you get a very high sheet density of charge up to 10 to the power 13 per centimeter square in Elgan GAN. You can get even 2 into 10 to the power 13 in aluminum nitride GAN etc. Electron mobility is fairly high 2000. Okay. And it can go to very high temperatures, people have shown at even 600 degrees Celsius or even 1000 degrees Celsius, you can operate a hemp because it is a very wide band gap material. These material advantages translate to device advantage. For instance, you can go to high voltage, okay, you can bias the device at 50 volt, 100 volt for RF application. You can get really high current densities in the you know more than 1 amp per millimeter which is you know impossible to achieve in gallium arsenide hemp for instance, you can get to high frequencies people have shown up to W band 94 gigahertz people have shown power amplifier MMICs. You can have higher impedance okay, and this helps in matching the circuit and you have lower capacitances because of the design that you that it enables. And this translates at the system level for instance a power amplifier you can have power amplifiers with higher efficiency and higher gain, higher power density, the footprint will reduce and because its thermal conductivity is reasonably good as good as silicon. Uh, it is not as bad as sapphire or other oxide. So, it is it's a decent benefit. Uh, you can go to wider bandwidths of course, because you have a larger uh, frequency range over which you can get power, ruggedness, low noise. Uh, low noise is also by the way uh, uh, a very important aspect these days. And so, different although power amplifier is the dominant application, people are increasingly looking at low noise amplifier also and switches also. Uh, because if you can integrate power amplifier, low noise amplifier and switch, you can kind of make a front end module or a TR module, transmit receive module to some extent, it will be integrated. So, it is always integrated solutions are better for the system as opposed to combining various things. So, people are looking at GAN LNA, GAN switches also uh, for integrated GAN solution. Of course, voltage control oscillator, mixers, all these things, phase shifters are also in increasingly investigated although they may not be out in the market as yet as much. Okay. So, if I again this image is from uh, this reference and they probably have taken it from a, a company called Corvo. But there is an important uh, feel when you look at the visuals you know of, of how actually the GAN device offers advantage in terms of size and density. So, you can see a gallium nitride hemp here you know it is so tiny this is your gallium nitride dye and it is probably an MMIC and you can see that this is a 0 0.1 it is actually micron. So, it is 0 0.15 micron gate length technology where you are getting 2.8 watt per millimeter of saturated power at a certain frequency. Okay. But look at uh, a pseudomorphic hemp. This is a pseudomorphic hemp of 0.25 micron technology and you can see that it gives you only 6.65 watt per millimeter which is roughly 5 times 4 to 5 times lower than what gallium nitride offers for a size that is probably I do not know 4 5 times bigger. 
okay. This LMR Knight chip is 5 times bigger gives you still 4 times lower output power density. This is also a pseudomorphic hemmed. This is a 0.15 micron gate technology. So, this and this are apple to apple comparison you can say, but it gives you only 0.8 watt per mm which is still 3 to 4 times lower than what gallium nitrate offers for a size that is probably at least 3 times smaller in gallium nitrate and this is 2014. So, this is about 9 years back. So, you can imagine the kind of advancement that GAN technology has been making in RF power amplifier you know space because of the advantages. So, this is again a summary slide of the device aspects that have to be kept in mind when we discuss about applications of gallium nitrate hemp's for uh, RF application especially power amplifier. This is how a typical stack would look like because most of the gallium nitride RF devices are fabricated on silicon carbide substrate. Silicon carbide gives you excellent heat management so that is very good and because the lattice mismatch of gallium nitride with silicon carbide is relatively less than other that of other substrates it gives you a crystal quality which is better the relatively better to that grown on say silicon. So, gallium nitride material quality on silicon carbide is excellent thermal conductivity is excellent of the substrate. So, this is what is used in predominantly used in RF application. There are dislocations you can see that these lines are actually dislocations that are coming up, but dislocation density is in the range of 10 to the power 8 per centimeter square or lower and so that is not very low that is a pretty high dislocation density, but it is about 10 to 100 times lower dislocation density than if you grow again on silicon for instance. So, that way it is much better and with this dislocation densities people are actually actually getting excellent you know performance in output data. So, <coughs> this buffer you know you directly do not start GAN growth on silicon carbide as I have already explained you grow a nucleation layer which is typically aluminum nitride okay. You start with a nucleation layer which is aluminum nitride. On top of that you let the gall gallium nitride buffer grow and typically people do an iron doping of the gallium nitride buffer. So, that the background unintentional impurities can be compensated can be sucked away by this iron doping okay. But you stop the iron doping closer to the 2D EG channel because this is a 2D electron gas channel. You do not want the iron doping to come too close to the 2D electron gas channel because iron doping because it is a compensating acceptor like trap. It will introduce, introduce traps and that has deleterious effect or detrimental effect on the device performance if the iron doping comes too close to the channel. It can trap electrons, it can lead to huge collapse of the current under you know buffer induced current collapse. So, we keep about few hundred nanometer 200, 400 nanometer sometimes even less sometimes more uh, uh, channel which is undoped which is not doped with iron and then below that you have this iron doping layer and you get this 2D electron gas density of course, you talk about contact resistance which is RC you want to minimize it as much as possible. The series excess resistance, source excess resistance, then drain excess resistance, the source excess resistance directly affects your GM whereas the drain excess resistance RD will affect your delay and hence your FT it will also affect your breakdown. A larger RD will help break down but it will reduce your FT and vice versa. So, that is a delay that is a trade off you have to you know do anyways. Uh, you have to give a silicon nitrate passivation in order to reduce current collapse because on the surface there will be donor like states that can trap electrons that can lead to a gate collapse. I mean when you pulse the gate the current in the channel will not be able to respond as fast because the traps have will not tra traps are slow. So, you protect the surface you protect the traps with silicon nitride uh, and that on the flip side is that you kind of reduce the breakdown to some extent because you are able you are not allowing the surface donor states to uh, take the electrons from the gate and so the depletion below that also is compromised. So, your uh, your breakdown uh, it generally suffers when you have an excellent silicon nitrate passivation. So, there is a trade off that you have to make anyways. It is a self aligned gate field plate then there is a source field plate for instance okay. So, source field plate and gate field plate helps you improve the breakdown. Uh, these are the different issues that and design things that you need to consider when you are discussing about RF hemps okay gallium nitrate RF devices okay. So, that is all fine. So, now what we do next is that we uh, look at certain things this is something that I have already talked about in brief in our discussion for L gas gas hemps is that there is this via hole technology. This is the side view this is the side view of for instance a gallium nitrate wafer where it is it says silicon, but it can be silicon carbide it is actually silicon carbide in most application. What you do is that you etch the silicon carbide all the way till you reach the metal pad on the top which is your source. Okay, it is your source and then you evaporate or you sputter or you plate metal you do not evaporate you typically plate electro plate or sputter metal which could be aluminum or it could be uh, nickel for instance that you have a ground plane. 
So, this is your via hole is a metallic plane on the below and then it is shorted to the source below uh, from the top. So, all the sources will be shorted to the ground plane below. So, all the sources are connected internally okay, because you are connecting from the downside. However, this is like the via hole right it helps reduce your source inductance because you do not have to wire bond the source per se. Uh, in general it helps reduce the source inductance and this substrate silicon carbide for instance is thinned. Silicon carbide is thin you know it is typically 350 to 500 micron thick silicon carbide substrate, but after fabricating everything you do grinding there is a, these are the techniques in packaging you know facilities they will do grinding it is a technique uh, lapping and polishing, polishing okay. grinding lapping polishing these techniques are adopted to thin the silicon uh, carbide to thin the silicon carbide from 350 500 nanometer micron to about 100 micron. Okay, sometimes we will go up to even 50 micron, but typically 100 micron for instance. Okay. So, you thin, thin it down to 100 micron and after thinning it down you etch the via hole and that via hole etch chemistry you need a deep reacting reactive ion etching tool okay, with very high power something like 600 watt, 800 watt of RI, RF power in that plasma. This is a plasma tool essentially to etch and people use something like SF6. This is the plasma that you use to etch the silicon carbide and you have to make sure that the, the etched byproducts are have to be become have to become volatile species species so that you can take them out you they do not have to redeposit on the same substrate. So, people add some amount of oxygen or argon also in the plasma ok. These are process issues that people have to optimize and carefully develop in order to develop this via hole technology so that you can have this in, and you have to stop exactly at the source metal and then you have to electroplate. But when you etch the silicon nit silicon carbide uh, for via hole you have to cover the rest of the material on the back side you know you, you have to flip the wafer upside down and then you have to subject it to plasma. The rest of the things has to be covered and typically nickel metal is used as a mask. Nickel metal can be used as a mask so that the rest is covered in nickel and then you this part is not covered in nickel. So, you can etch with a plasma and create this hole ok. This is an SCM image a scanning electron microscope image of a hole that is created. And so, I told you the hole is very important for uh, reducing the ground induct as uh, the so source inductance it gives you a ground inductance plane that is shorted to the source above and the thinning is done for thermal issues of course it helps manage the heat and also the thinning is done because you know on the top if you look at the top of the substrate you have this transmission lines the metallic lines transmission lines will be needed for say impedance matching or you know for making you know MMIC when you say monolithic microwave integrated circuit you need to make resistors, capacitors, inductors etc all on the chip. So, you have to have spiral inductors, resistors whatever. So, this metal lines that are on the top of the surface you know the width of the metal line divided by the substrate thickness this thickness T ok that defines the impedance actually that is that defines the impedance. So, if your thickness is too large then the metal width that you need will be too large like that ok. So, that will lead to a lot of difficulty not only I mean difficult in the sense ki you will lose out a lot of area of the wafer to this large and thick you know very wide lines. So, to have a reasonable line width comparable to that what is used in gallium arsenide industry for instance you need to thin the substrate down. So, that the substrate thickness or sorry the line width thickness to the substrate thickness ratio that defines the impedance is a reasonable number. And also the thinning helps you improve the uh, the thermal management of course, when you especially operate in CW continuous wave performance and when you operate at saturated power heating is a major issue ok. So, this is about via hole technology. I am showing you two examples of commercially available GAN dye RF dye that you can buy from the market right now right today. Uh, but these are uh, most of the companies are based in US or Europe and there is all these kinds of uh, import restrictions because this is ITER restricted it is a very strategic military sensitive technology. Um, so, you so some of these devices can be bought only beyond only to a certain, certain frequency or certain power and in certain volume ok. So, there is this, all these restrictions, but these are available commercially in general and you can see that these are from a company called Wool Speed which was earlier Cree. Uh, this was recently acquired by another company called this uh, RF division was acquired by MACOM which is also US strategic based company. Uh, you can see this is a 120 watt RF device that gives you power at 8 gigahertz. 8 gigahertz is at the border of C band and X band and it is a bare die it is not a package device, but it is it seems like you can see the image here it is a bare die you can see it is a large large bar you know it is a there are so many power cells you know each of these could be a power cell that has multiple fingers that are combined. Uh, at this die level to give you this massive tile of device ok uh, and it gives you 120 watt and at at, at the border of C band X band you know that is that is amazing to get the same power for gallium arsenide you would need a much much larger die for instance ok. 
Um, so you can see that these are some of the you know you can see that these are the these are the pads. Uh, it's not clearly of visible here what is what, but one of these could be the drain pad. The other could be the source pad. And you can see these are some of these holes you see these are most likely the via holes that are etched on each and every of the source uh, probably finger okay that could be via holes it is not very clear from the image but that could be via holes on each and every of the uh, source finger or maybe there could be uh, source pads on each of them okay it is if you zoom it out it will get pixelated so we do not know exactly but there would be via holes in such a large device okay there would be via holes in, in either each source finger or could be at the edge of each power cell there would be via holes that are connected to the ground below and such a large high power devices need stability circuits also because inherently there will be an stability issue there the device will tend to oscillate so you try to introduce a resistance on the gate side to re minimize to reduce the gain so that your stability becomes better you know you trade offs gain and stability. So, there would be also stability circuits or stability resistances that are inserted here which, which would not be very much clearly obvious okay. This could probably not be a match transistor, but people also sell match transistor where there is an internal matching network to ensure that the output of the your die is 50 ohm matched okay. So, this is another device from the same company this is 8 watts only, but at 6 gigahertz which is C band and you can see that you know you can you can more clearly see here for instance uh, this could be you know gate I, I believe that is gate you can see that gate fingers are coming here this is probably drain you can see that you know there is a drain 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 and this is source you can see these are via holes very obviously these are via holes there are two via holes actually and there could be air bridge on top of that also it is not very obvious here but there could be air bridge in top of via hole also. So, this is how it is made and this is how these devices these are bare dies that are available in the market today okay and fabricating them of course needs a lot of uh, insight into the process issues right from omic metal to mesa to gate to silicon nitrate passivation gate field plate source field plate coplanar waveguide in case you are doing on frame measurement electroplating so that you can thicken the metal via hole etching air bridge all these process modules have to be thoroughly developed optimized and qualified before you can actually have these devices which are then electrically qualified of course that you have to meet the certain specification and only then you can take to the market right. So, if I look at a data sheet of a commercially available GAN hemp this is a different commercially available GAN hemp for instance uh, this commercially available GAN hemp has 35 watts of power it can give it anywhere from 0 to 4 gigahertz. So, at low at almost DC up to 4 gigahertz it can give you 35 watts more or less okay and this is an unmatched gallium net it says it says unmatched. So, it, there is no matching that is provided by the company you they will give you the data sheet with detailed data you need to go and design the matching circuit. They will give you the output impedances or input impedances of the device at different bias condition at different frequencies and using those data points if you are a circuit designer you can go and design the matching network. So, you have to implement the matching network on a board it is not an MMIC it is it will be hybrid amplifier where you will take the die you will attach it on a on a substrate and then you have to bond or you have to integrate or assemble or fabricate external components or maybe transmission lines in order to match the device because it is an unmatched device okay. It operates from a 28 volt rail which means that the supply voltage is 28 volt you are going to bias the device at 20 volt. So, if you are going to bias the device at 20 volt your breakdown has to be at least twice of that, but that is the bare minimum ideally it should be even more than that that helps improve reliability. So, what I mean is that if you have a 28 volt DC bias then you need to have twice of that you know you need to have twice 28 volt 28 volt that is 56 volt, but that is that is borderline it should be more than 65 70 volt okay at least higher the voltage better it is because you do not want to approach the breakdown voltage very close you know if it is say 65 70 volt breakdown you can still operate at 28 volt, but 56 volt is kind of close to 65 volt. So, you will every swing you know will you are approaching the breakdown voltage by just little amount you are remaining you know. So, that is not good for long term reliability it will lead to stress and it will degrade your device. So, you need to keep a margin your breakdown voltage should be much higher and then your RF, RF swing should not should be very far from the breakdown. So, you can see that the maximum source drain voltage that they can apply is 120 volt. So, you are you are at 120 volt, but you are going to have a swing 28 28 volt only. So, keeping a large margin so that is helpful for your uh, reliability, but again there is a trade off you cannot arbitrarily keep the breakdown very high because your breakdown depends on the gate to drain distance and your gate to drain distance if the gate to drain distance is very large your cutoff frequency will drop because your electrons will take longer time to transit. So, here you can see this is only up to 4 gigahertz. So, you are a okay you can increase the gate drain spacing to probably 5 micron or so and so maybe even 6 micron okay 
and so uh, you are okay in the sense key you will get a good breakdown voltage but if this was x band you are at 12 gigahertz or 10 gigahertz then it will be very very difficult to get 120 volt breakdown and still uh, you know have an x band operation so this was s band for instance s c band you know at the border of that so you are okay at 120 you can so 120 volt ensures that you have good reliability because you are you are not stressing the device as much because it's only 28 volt bias what is the gate to source bias you can apply maximum of plus 2 volt on the gate beyond that the gate will start leaking the gate drain diode will turn on apply my negative of minus 10 maximum below that also you are going to have too much of negative bias on the gate not good temperature of course 65 minus 65 to 150 degrees celsius that <coughs> temperature qualification has to be separately done in the thermal stress thermal cycling uh, operating junction temperature maximum you can this is maximum rating by the way and this is not simultaneously you do not get all these parameters simultaneously it is separate separate measurement for each of them the maximum rating you can go up to 20 225 degrees celsius of junction temperature can be attained here the forward gate leakage can be 10 milliamp max should not be more than that the maximum drain current will be 4.5 amps here okay 4.5 amps here and all these things are there screw torque etc not pertinent so much for this course uh, and then temp operating temperature minus 40 to 100 degrees celsius so this is how the data sheet looks like beyond this also they will give you data sheet by the way data sheet is just not one sheet for instance they will give you the typical characteristics at room temperature so you see typical threshold voltage is minus 3 volt but the minimum threshold voltage could be minus 3.8 volt you know there could be a range and maximum would be minus 2.3 volt so they will give you a range of threshold voltage in which your device will operate typically the threshold voltage will be minus 3 volt and this threshold voltage is defined at a drain voltage of 10 volt at a drain current of 10.8 milliamp so that means when you are doing the idvg for instance right you will go like this no so the threshold voltage is defined when your current is 10.8 milliamps it looks like very large current but in but this is a larger device where the maximum current is 4.5 amps so 10.8 milliamp is actually not so much so you have 10.8 milliamp and a drain bias of 10 volt you define the threshold voltage here similarly gate question voltage is minus 2.7 volt that means if your threshold is minus 3 volt you are biasing the device for rf power application at minus 2.7 volt which is very close to pinch off if you are biasing the device very close to pinch off it is kind of deep class ab or you know there are different kinds of AB, uh, class ab there are different it could be class ab deep class ab it's a different classes of operation of power amplifier means you, different biasing conditions that you are subjecting a device to the drain current the typical you know the maximum in, in, here they say that the maximum drain current that they can have is 4.5 amps but they didn't specify the condition here per se but here they are specifying some condition and it seems the saturated drain current can go up to 10.5 amps they did not measure the maximum current the typical is 10.5 amps and the minimum is 7.6 amps at what condition at a gate voltage of 2 volt and a drain voltage of 6 volt maybe the previous value here was at a gate voltage of 0 volt okay uh, we do not know but at here at gate voltage of 2 volt you can go up to 10.5 amps of current and this is your breakdown so you see the breakdown now defined as the breakdown is defined as 84 volt when the gate is biased at minus 8 volt that means the channel is deep pinched off your channel is pinching off at minus 3 volt so if you apply minus 8 volt on the gate you are minus 5 volt lower than the threshold voltage you are if this is a minus 3 volt you are applying somewhere here minus 8 volt so your deep threshold deep pinch off in that pinch off condition when you keep increasing the drain bias you will eventually hit breakdown it is defined at 10.8 milliamps of current at that current level your breakdown is 84 volt we do not know how they define this 120 volt maybe this is your 120 volt could be your on state operation that means you have your on current like that right on current not the off current so maybe the highest temperature highest voltage you can go is 120 degree 120 volt but under pulse condition maybe details are not provided here but if you observe if you measure a three terminal breakdown the breakdown is happens to be 84 volt okay so this is 84 volt and you are having a swing of 28 28 so 56 volt 84 volt is good enough for 56 volt swing so that's how they have done it these are rf performances that are given gain of 13 db uh, minimum typical 14 db output power will be 45 watt is typical art output power minimum is 30 output power efficiency could be up to 60 percent minimum could be 50 percent vswr refers to voltage tending wave ratio it's a very holy concept in microwave engineering uh, we'll talk about that when we discuss about microwave engineering concepts essentially it has got to do with the reflection coefficient of your wave okay so we is up to vswr of 10 is to 1 that means a very high uh, rfs you know you can say excursion they have given okay and they have not seen any damage at all that's what it means higher vswr you can 
you know you you code that your device operates better it is matlab you can it can sustain to a larger uh, voltage swing essentially you can say okay these are some capacitance values that are measured mentioned at 1 megahertz and so on but this is okay okay this is another device uh, this may or may not be commercially available but this is from a commercial entity such as toshiba they this is an x band device if i am not uh, wrong okay and this is an x band device which means this is at, at around 10 gigahertz 8 to 12 gigahertz range you can see that the total gate width is uh, unit gate width is 160 micron which means this is 160 micron remember i told you for x band you can have up to 150 micron so 160 is close enough so around 160 micron is the gate width so you can see how many gates are there say 30 40 50 gates maybe are there okay and the total gate width is 11.2 mm so which means if you get 5 watt per mm just giving an example then 11.2 or 11 mm will give you around 55 watt of power okay that is crazy number of power and you can see that these are big pads you know these are these are gate uh, this will be drain and this will be source. So, the source will go over that this this is the air bridge the source will go over the gate. So, essentially there is a gate correct gate is going like that source is here. So, source is going like that. Okay, so, the source air bridge is coming it is a very large device you can see um, it will have its stability circuit it will have its via hole it will have its air bridge all things understood okay, but this is how people make it and combining the power becomes very difficult because this propagation delay on this side and this side also matters. So, you need to bring wire and you can feed in simultaneously but in X band that also wires also can become difficult although you can precisely design what kind or calculate or expect analyze what kind of wire thicknesses wire diameters are needed in order to. Uh, do this wire bonding at, at at say 10 gigahertz, but at millimeter wave frequencies this becomes very difficult. You have to have via hole technology. So, through the via hole you will short, short everything to the ground plane and the ground plane uh, you know and, and so your ground plane is the common source inductance plane. So, that is how people do it you know you may not be able to feed everything together on the on the uh, on one side okay. Uh, this is the and, and sc scanning electron image of a gallium nitrate dye that is inside a package okay the package is not seen very clearly here but it's inside a package you can see that uh, which is what so this this is most likely source you can see this is most likely source source and this is uh, gate this is drain you can see the drain fingers here 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 right oh sorry that is drain is yeah here here and the source where it be the source actually no this will both be the source you can see this is metallically short this is the same as this okay this is the same as this this will be drain that means okay so this is drain this is you see my point this is the same metal as this this is the same metal as this this is the same metal as this so that will be drain this will be all drain okay this has to be gate because the gate finger runs like in between you can see you can zoom in and see this is the gate gate that will you know gate will run there so what is the source source is this 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 and the source will have air bridge either they are connected from here here or they are connected from here here okay or they will be having a via hole that will be connected to the bottom. But this is uh, a power bar you can see these are different this is a power cell these are 5 power cells that are combined with this wire bonding we call it a power bar it is bonded wire bonded to a ceramic package there are different kinds of package QFN and uh, air cavity field and ceramic package. So, this is in a ceramic package it is wire bonded it could be probably not so high frequency application okay. So, this is a gallium nitrate dye inside a package okay. Uh, and once you put it in a package then you can give the package to a designer and or a end user and he can use the package with the output characteristics or all the device characteristics that you measure and provide to him or her and they will be able to design their amplifier circuit uh, based on the characteristics that you provide. If it is matched to 50 ohm that is great for them otherwise they have to design their own matching circuit. So, with this uh, we will come to a conclusion of today's lecture, uh, lecture 32 where we talked about some of the more practical aspects of gallium nitrate high power RF devices. Uh, we talked about uh, a large area device fabrication and via hole technology and we discussed the data sheet of commercially available RF hemp. We showed how the commercially available RF hemp looks like okay. So, going ahead we will briefly touch upon uh, in a very qualitative way how they use these devices to make an amplifier. I will not go into the details of the amplifier because that will be towards the end of the course where we will briefly very briefly talk about what power amplifier is and what are the different classes. But today I will show you images of how uh, in an MIC or an MMIC people actually use the device to make uh, a power amplifier okay. So, that will be the subject of our next class and then we will continue on linearity and other aspects also. We have two more lectures remaining for gallium nitrate hemp. So, thank you for your time I will see you in the next class.